Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, an overview of health IT projects. This is Lecture A. The objectives for an overview of health IT projects are to review the history of project management, define what a project is, define project management, identify reasons that more organizations are implementing HIT projects, Identify key characteristics for project success and failure. Describe the range and characteristics of health IT projects. For Lecture A, we will focus on all of the objectives. This unit will provide you with a high-level overview of health IT projects. Here is a brief history of project management. Project management can be traced to early civilizations including the Egyptian pyramids and the Great Wall of China. The year 1910 brought the Gantt chart, a project management tool still in use today. Project management was first considered an isolated concept in 1954. The latter part of the 1950s saw great strides in the development of project management concepts and techniques. After the Soviet Union launched Sputnik in 1957 and with it the space race of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, the U.S. Department of Defense focused greater resources toward strengthening its space and defense project procedures. In the same year, the U.S. Navy created the Program Evaluation and Review Technique, or PERT, to help manage its Polaris Missile Submarine Program. Around the same time, the DuPont Corporation developed its critical path method, usually referred to as CPM, as a project management tool for scheduling various processes or activities. Eventually, PERT was adapted to employ a Work Breakdown Structure, or WBS, which we discuss in other units of this course. Private enterprises began to adapt some of these methods. One of the most important guiding techniques to specify how a project should be managed is the Project Management Body of Knowledge, or PMBOK, created by PMI in the late 1980s. The techniques outlined in the PMBOK standardize the practices of the development team, which makes it easier to predict, manage, and track projects. The 2000s brought development of the Agile Alliance, along with an update of the PMBOK into its fourth edition. The multi-project company environment of today requires more flexible and cyclical models than the critical chain models used in the past. Many of the critical chain-oriented project management techniques, which focus on the resources required to complete project tasks, are aimed at very large-scale, one-time, non-routine projects and are unnecessarily complex and costly for smaller projects. Modern project management, however, includes all kinds of projects and all kinds of management models and techniques. The PMI PMBOK defines a project as, quote, a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service, unquote. You can consider a project complete when its goals have been reached and you can consider a project terminated when its goals can no longer be reached for any reason or the project is no longer necessary. As a professional area of knowledge, project management provides a methodology for preparing, coordinating, and supervising people, supplies, and processes, from project initiation to closure, to achieve definite targets. While its scope is broad enough to apply to complicated, multifaceted concerns such as software development, the techniques of project management are appropriate for any project. Project management helps organizations achieve specific goals, use resources effectively and efficiently, and typically provides feedback or information that will impact future decision making. It helps an organization build a culture of execution and collaboration and achieve desired results reliably. Project management can also provide timely and accurate data that informs business decisions to maintain a competitive edge. 
Additionally, project management ultimately increases productivity and enthusiasm among employees by developing and implementing effective communication processes. Finally, in healthcare, project management can be applied to quality improvement and operational efficiencies. Because project management has such a broad scope, the literature on the topic is equally vast. We can study it in general terms as it is applied across domains, or we can drill down as our projects become more narrowly focused on such areas as IT projects or even more specialized IT projects in healthcare. Each of these professional arenas foster communities of practice that include professional associations, publications, and meetings. Many are broad and or influential enough to cultivate their own special interest groups or sponsor industry standards and guidelines. The IT field offers such professional organizations as the Association for Computing Machinery and the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, better known as IEEE. Professional resources for the specific area of health IT can be found at associations like Health Information Management System Society, the American Health Information Management Association, and the American Medical Informatics Association. The Project Management Institute, or PMI, is also a great source of information on project management. Along with its PMBOK guide, it offers a PMI Healthcare Special Interest Group. Like any professional area of knowledge, project management comes with its own vocabulary and concepts. The first term you will need to understand is stakeholders. Stakeholders are anyone who has a vested interest in the project and how the project impacts them. This includes people who may not be primarily involved in the project, but could be impacted by its outcomes and, as such, should be taken into consideration. The next term is business owners or sponsors. This is a subset of the stakeholder category, but the business owner has a vested interest in the successful outcome of the project and is the funding source. They set direction, provide objectives, and provide approvals for major scope changes. Which leads us to our next term, scope. Scope defines the boundaries of a project, such as schedule, financial resources, objectives, and staff. Quote, scope creep, unquote, refers to the tendency of most projects to shift boundaries as the project moves forward and professionals often use the term, quote, gold plating, unquote, when they speak of adding needless details to a project. Keeping a watchful eye and a firm hand on your project scope will help you avoid such project roadblocks as scope creep and gold plating. Scope is considered one of the recognized project constraints, which also include schedule and funding. Constraints are things that might restrict, limit or regulate the project. Often at the beginning of a project, all details are not clarified. To protect yourself for the myriad of unknowns, it is important to clearly communicate scope with your constraints, knowns, and assumptions, unknowns. Assumption is a belief based on what you assume will be true in the future. Your original scope is based, to an extent, on a belief regarding things that are not in your control, and if that belief changes as the project progresses. This could impact your scope and potentially impact your constraints. Project risk refers to those factors that may delay or obstruct a project's completion. Part of a project manager's job is to plan for and reduce the amount of risk to a project. Another primary part of your job focuses on communications. No project can run smoothly if expectations, responsibilities, objectives, and timelines are not clearly understood by all stakeholders or those who are invested in your project. Stakeholders can include team staff, clients, or consultants. As a project manager, you may find yourself communicating with these stakeholders through a number of different media, including hard copy documents, email, or project websites. 
Finally, the term, quote, deliverables, unquote, refers to the project's final product or results, the outcome that you, quote, deliver, unquote, upon completion of the project. The five process stages of project management include the following, initiation, planning, implementation, monitoring and controlling, and closing. The initiation stage covers all the processes that define the project's scope, objectives, and environment. Once the manager develops a comprehensive grasp of these details, he or she can begin the planning stage. This stage focuses on developing a schedule and budget, identifying necessary staff, resources, and supplies, and preparing for potential risks. All of this work is captured in the project plan. During the implementation stage, the manager will target the project staff, process, activities, and resources toward the project objectives. The monitoring and controlling stage includes supervising this entire execution while constantly reviewing the current outcomes against the project plan and defined baselines, and controlling for risk. Finally, the manager presents the final deliverable for client acceptance or approval during the closing stage, while finalizing the project processes and activities. Why use process? A defined process technique is not an assembly line of automated steps. Rather, it provides structure, consistency, clear communication, and efficiency controls that improve the way you and your team work. It also minimizes risk and eliminates problems. The literature on project management offers many approaches or project life cycles to the work. Based on certain project details such as project scope, complexity, outcomes, and timelines, the project manager decides which life cycle best suits a project. This unit provides a basic overview of project life cycles, but you will receive more in-depth information on various project approaches in later units. For now, briefly, project life cycles include a linear method, which is typically best applied to large, complex projects while iterative and adaptive methods are more appropriate for rapid application development or projects that occur over short periods of time and require high levels of prototype development, feedback, modification, and redelivery. Agile techniques are best used in small-scale projects or on elements of a broader project that require a quick turnaround. This slide identifies several common reasons for initiating a project. First, opportunity. Market demands often call for a project. Technological advances or challenges often inspire new projects. Challenges include customer requested tools or social needs. The last category of drivers is business requirements. In the field of health IT projects, these include legal requirements, clinical advances, and regulatory requirements. Since 2009, Meaningful Use, MU, has become a major driver of health IT projects. Meaningful Use is a new term that has come into the healthcare market in recent years. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 outlined the government's expectations for meaningful use of healthcare technology. Implementing meaningful use initiatives nationwide improves quality, safety, and efficiency of patient care, engages patients and families in their own health care, improves care coordination, ensures adequate privacy and security for personal health information, and improves population and public health. Let's take a look at the state of health IT implementation across the nation. The 2014 HIMSS Workforce Survey of Healthcare Information Technology noted that 80% of hospital respondents plan to increase IT staff in the next 12 months, with 50% planning to hire at least one to five IT FTE in the coming year. 
Clearly, there is continued demand to support the big reform initiatives in health IT. The biggest challenge for the health IT industry is the availability of qualified workers. The HIMSS Workforce Survey notes that over one-third of respondents had to scale back or put on hold an IT project due to not being able to staff it fully. Consider that this metric does not include those projects put at high risk of failure due to inadequate resource allocation. All MU criteria projects are HIT projects, but not all HIT projects are meaningful use. Achieving meaningful use requires necessary changes in the health industry. It demands changes to the way the entire information system in this industry is managed, distributed, and exchanged, by whom, how, and for what purpose. It requires a realistic approach to the technological landscape that can capture the knowledge and skill sets necessary to achieve meaningful use. These include the current and future workflow of health information, the appropriate health IT infrastructure, and the ability to drive projects effectively. This is where project management comes in. Meaningful use affects everyone in the healthcare strata. A small doctor's office can receive tens of thousands of dollars in incentive payments from the government for implementing a healthcare IT system, while a large academic hospital could get millions of dollars for increasing its meaningful use of healthcare IT. All of these organizations need someone who can understand and manage the demands, resources, processes, challenges, and benefits of these complex projects. CMS programmatic requirements related to certified EHRs and value-based HIT are also becoming increasingly important. As a project manager, you will be driving the health IT initiatives. Although these projects can have specific and complex details, the basic lessons of project management apply. You are responsible for realizing the project's vision by following the typical processes for project management, planning, execution, monitoring, and closure. And you will also provide a level of subject matter expertise. Since so many IT projects are supervised by committees unfamiliar with the specific issues and challenges of these jobs, the committees often hire project management professionals to oversee operations and achieve their objectives. You will function as that subject matter expert. Your first job will be to understand this new landscape so that you can define your scope and lead your team authoritatively. Project managers who come from a business or IT framework will need to learn the medical terminology so that they can discuss projects with healthcare professionals. At the same time, those who come from the medical side of project management will need to acquaint themselves with the technical requirements so they can have productive conversations with technical groups. Project managers need to be able to work on both sides of the tracks. According to the HIMSS survey, hospitals' health IT priorities include achieving meaningful use by focusing on such clinical systems as computerized practitioner order entry, electronic health records, and e-prescribing, and by optimizing current systems. Nearly half of all respondents noted that their health IT projects will focus on implementing the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems 10th Revision, better known as the ICD-10. The ICD-10 includes the medical classification list for the coding of diseases as maintained by the World Health Organization. The HIMSS website is a great source for information on health IT. You will need to gather details about the organization's current information systems and how they perform on the meaningful use intended outcomes of quality, safety, and efficiency. This information will provide your baseline to track your new system's improvement. As you begin developing your new system, 
The choices you make will impact future information systems. So it is important to employ staff with the appropriate skill sets who can design with an eye to future use. Once you've done the legwork in developing your scope, the rest of the process should be very similar to other project management work. During your planning stage, you'll assemble a team of skilled, creative professionals and develop a timeline and resource allocation. It is important to know that because health IT projects are so complex, they tend to become unwieldy. One way to tackle an overwhelming project is by reducing it to a number of simpler goals. So you might take a complex project, such as digitizing a medical office's paperwork, and break it down into manageable parts. These might include one project for converting records to digital format, another for training personnel to use the digital database, and then a final project to post the database online. This process allows you to step up to meeting the overall objectives of the project by reaching achievable goals and charting your progress. A large part of project management is personnel management, so you must communicate timelines, deliverables, and expectations to your staff. Be willing to implement motivation or negotiation techniques and maintain a respectful awareness of others' politics and cultures. A major part of your job requires a constant vigilance regarding your project boundaries. So don't let a project grow in complexity beyond its scope. Your stakeholders, especially those on the client side, often propose, quote, improvements, unquote, to your project that would ultimately tax your budget and resources without offering truly beneficial functionality. You will need to weigh these requests against your project constraints and objectives and thoughtfully consider only those that bring true value to your project. These requests can add up and balloon if you are not particularly vigilant during the monitoring and controlling process. Project success factors include the following. Executive support can make or break a project, particularly in regard to resource allocation. From the very beginning of a project, user investment and participation is essential to your success. If you don't have a comprehensive understanding of your users' requirements or how they hope to use the product, your project will fall short. A profitable undertaking often depends on an experienced project manager, especially in a highly specialized field like health IT. Their background and familiarity with the demands of the specific environment and its users can help a project reach successful completion. For instance, an experienced project manager will take a clinical provider's hectic schedule into account when planning meetings or requesting feedback. Unlike the fairly predictable schedule of a business environment, the demands on a clinician's time can be irregular and urgent. To accommodate the changing schedules of these stakeholders, meetings must be short, efficient, goal-oriented, and above all, flexible. Metrics can be defined by, quote, reducing X by 50% or increasing Y by 25%, unquote. The goal is to meet the metric. Using a clear set of business objectives to frame and focus your project are critical elements in your success. Why are you undertaking this project? What do you hope to achieve? How will it help the organization's business? These are all questions that can help you define your business objectives for this project. Factors contributing to failure include lack of planning, lack of resources, and an unwieldy scope. But if you have planned correctly in your early stages, these should not become major issues. This concludes Lecture A of an Overview of Health IT Projects. In summary, health IT projects and the approaches to those projects vary widely in terms of scope, critical need, and risk factors. But they all have one aim, to produce a needed product or service. 
Understanding that certain factors are common across all projects can help you manage those differences to achieve success in any kind of project. The project management process is not magic. It is built on a sure combination of technique and experience. And if you educate yourself on the details of the health IT scope of your institution, it will lead you to a successful outcome.